Hi guys, DIY Mark here with another video for you. I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna tackle one of my to-do list items that's uh, been on my list for quite some time, and that is to add this wall sconce in this bedroom. I'm actually in my son's bedroom, and uh, it's just currently got this switch that goes to a dedicated outlet or a switched outlet, and then you're required to use a table lamp. And I have done this in every one of the other bedrooms. This is my last bedroom to do. And it involves cutting a hole here, adding a uh, junction box, and then fishing wires back to the switch. Um, and in the past, when I've done this in the other bedrooms, I've encountered some fire blocking, which has made it kind of difficult. So I recently picked up this new product. It's a Klein video monitor that has a gooseneck that you can shove down into the wall to get a kind of a behind the scenes what's going on in the wall. And it's got a little LCD screen so you can see what's going on. So I thought I'd give this a chance, try this out, review this product at the same time, and knock out one of my to-do list items. Let's take a closer look at the job here. Not only would I like to add a sconce above the switch next to the doorway, but I'd also like to add an outlet below the switch because all of the outlets in the room are blocked by the bed or the furniture. Sometimes it's helpful to create a diagram of the circuit to determine exactly what needs to be modified. I found this line drawing which illustrates what the current layout is of my circuit. Powers enters the switch outlet box on the left hand side and goes to the top outlet. That same power travels to the switch box via the white wire and then when the switch is thrown to the on position it travels back to the bottom part of the outlet and lights the table lamp for the room. I'm going to change the function of the travel wire that runs from the outlet to the wall switch. The desired result will look like a circuit that's similar to this one. So before we get started here, I first want to mention that I am not an electrician. And if this is not something that you're comfortable with, I wouldn't suggest that you do it. Um, we will turn off all the circuits in here, and so there's little chance of uh, electrical shock, but People have been known to wire things backwards or wrong and throw breakers and create all problem, kinds of problems. So if this is not your thing, uh, you're better off hiring an electrician. But overall, this is not a difficult task to do. I'm gonna put this on here. I'm gonna kind of eyeball where we're at with the stud. And then we're gonna just lay out for the sconce where we're gonna cut. And I'm just gonna trace around the back of the box. So I just finished marking for the down box, the lower box, outlet box below the switch, and we're ready to start cutting drywall. Um, before I do, I have taken the time to set up a drop cloth and take the stuff off the walls, and you'll want to do the same. Um, taking a few extra minutes now makes cleanup a lot easier uh, going forward. I'm just going to use a drywall saw and cut out our hole. And I'm going to be uh, mindful of where that stud is. And I'm also going to be mindful that I don't really know what's behind this. There could be wires, so you want to uh, proceed gingerly. You usually can feel things through the handle. But uh, if you're inexperienced with this, go slow. Take your time. Um, it is going to create a little bit of dust. So with the hole open, it gives me a chance to try the new Klein um, video uh, monitor. And you can see here, it's just a big gooseneck with a light on it. Um, but it gives a nice little picture on this little three inch L LED screen or LCD screen. I'm just gonna fish it in the wall. And then I can see exactly what's going on. In fact, I can see all the drywall dust. And unfortunately, uh, for me, my worst fears are confirmed. There is a piece of blocking somewhere down here above this switch, what we're going to have to try to penetrate, which is going to be tricky. And I can see the fire blocking very clear. And I'm just going to drop the auger, which is really long, right down into the center.
just hit the camera. Okay, okay, close. Now, since this is at an angle, it wants to go to the back side. So let me see if I can reach my hand in and flex this shaft to get it more in the middle. Yeah, like that. Perfect. Uh, it's not exactly in the middle, but it's better. And let's go ahead and drill. It's self-feeding. It's starting. It's self-feeding, so it should go right through pretty quickly. There it goes. It's biting. And I'm through. So this is a picture of the bore scope, what I'm seeing there. And you can see the hole that I just drilled, starting with the wire. I've got it in there, and I just need to hit the hole. So I'm going to reach my hand in here as best as I can to guide it. And then let's look the, at the, uh, the bore scope, and you can see I'm very close. See the wire moving around in there? Whoops, missed my spot. I'm close. And you can see it's going in the hole, and I'll just feed through now a couple of feet, and then we should be able to grab it from the other side. Sure enough, there's the wire right there in our switch box. And I'll just reach in and pull it through, and boom. So that's the wire that goes. Let me pull back a little bit. So now I got a wire from the sconce opening down through and into the switch box. Once we overcame the fire blocking and got all our wires pulled, the job now turns to feeding the wires into the remodeled junction boxes. I then inserted the boxes into the wall making sure they are plumb. I then tie the white neutral wires together, adding a pigtail for the new outlet, as well as the black wires, and connect the outlet to the proper wires. Back to the switch box, I tie the neutral wires together, and then I insert the switch to break the continuity for the black wires. Now we move over to the old switched outlet. We alter the circuit to match our proposed diagram, which now supplies power over to the new wall outlet, then the power travels up the wall to the wall switch, which controls our wall sconce. Well, I think this wraps up this project. I could scratch this item off the to-do list. I've got the sconce installed and it works great. And I've got the new outlet below, which will, which will be nice because it will provide an outlet that's not behind the furniture or the bed for tasks like vacuuming. And we converted that original switch outlet to a regular outlet. I wanted to close this video with a final review of the Klein Tools bore scope that we used. As you saw, I was able to snake this into the wall opening and see the fire blocking below and position my drill bit. Without it, I would have likely had to cut drywall or I would have had to had my drill bit blow through the back and uh, had to do some drywall work. So it allowed me to complete the whole project without any drywall repair. I'm not really fond of the fact that there's no charging light on or battery level indicator on it, so it made it difficult to tell when it's fully charged. I should also mention that several months ago, I purchased another product, a different bore scope called, from Amazon called a Dipstech. And this unit works a little bit differently. It, uh, it actually connects via Wi-Fi to your phone. It has this a gooseneck that is much longer, but it's not as stiff as the Klein, and consequently it jiggles around a lot, and it makes it somewhat difficult to, to use. In contrast, the Klein has a much more, more nice stiff gooseneck that holds its position well, and the image from both of the two units is very comparable. However, the bore scope from Amazon is under 40 bucks, and the Klein tool costs 150 bucks. While I would prefer using the Klein over the dips tech, paying more than triple is hard to justify, and consequently I would, I would downgrade the Klein for being so expensive. So overall, I would rate the Klein at a C plus or a B minus, which is three and a half stars in my book. But I hope you find this project helpful and found something that you can apply to your own work. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.